Let's turn our attention now to our formal system of interest, propositional logic, a logic that captures relationships between simple statements in order to evaluate and formulate deductive arguments. Here's a deductive argument from a kind of strange source. This is Ken Casey's argument from the Merry Pranksters. Either you're on the bus or you're off the bus. You're not on the bus. You're off the bus. So when we look at that argument, right, we want to evaluate that argument. First thing we need to do is figure out what it is structurally asserting. What is our logical structure here? And that might seem difficult at first, but not so bad, really. So let's just break it down. Our formal system is going to give us a representation, a symbol for each element of every propositional statement. Simple statements will be easy. Simple statements are just statements that say something that is either true or false about the world. Simpliciter. It's raining is a simple statement. Compound statements are statements that say something about the world by relating or modifying simple statements. So it's raining or it's snowing. That's a compound statement. It's not raining. That's a compound statement. So modifications of simple statements, relationships between simple statements, those are compound statements. In order to capture that, we need symbols to represent those relationships that are asserted when we modify a simple statement to make a compound statement, or when we relate the truth values of multiple simple statements, and those will be our logical connectives. Now, in order to make our logic as powerful as possible, our logic has a grammar, just like English does. And in fact, our logic can potentially symbolize and evaluate the logical form of an infinite number of deductive propositional logic arguments. And it does so with a very, very simple grammar. All of our grammar is going to be spelled out in terms of scope. So we'll look at each of these elements as we go through the lecture. Let's go back to that KC argument. That argument has two components to it. It has some simple statements and it has some compound statements. And as we'll see, our logic is just the creation and manipulation of simple and compound statements. We take a compound statement, we break it into a simple statement. We take a simple statement, we create a compound statement. So it's a lot like playing logical Legos, putting them together, taking them apart to create different kinds of structures. The simple statements in our Casey argument are, you're on the bus, you're off the bus. Those are two statements. They're either true or they're false, depending on how the world is. Our compound statements modify those simple statements or relate them. So either you're on the bus or you're off the bus. One of these things at least has to be true. Compound statement. You're not on the bus. It's not the case that you're on the bus is true. Modifying a simple statement, a compound statement. So we've got simple statements and we've got compound statements. Simple statements will represent using a capitalized letter. So each affirmative simple statement says something affirmative about the world. It's simple, it's raining, Calvin's a dog, and so on. Those are represented in a logic with a capitalized letter, usually the first letter of a significant word in the statement. So here's our governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, from Conan the Barbarian, and this is an actual quote from him in the past. As governor, my job is to defeat the Galima Democrats. All right, that was sexist. 
but we can still symbolize it, get rid of that with a D, capital D. My job is to defeat Democrats. I crush them beneath my vetoes. All right, that's an inappropriately violent metaphor, but we can still symbolize it with a C. Then I listened to the lamentations of the domestic partners and adopted children. Well, that's just, well, it's, you know, effed up. But it's also a compound statement. It combines multiple statements. And so we don't symbolize it with just a single letter. So how do we deal with compound statements? How do we capture their underlying structure? Well, we're going to use logical connectives. Now, there are... 16 potential binary logical connectives. That is 16 different relationships that can be asserted between two simple statements. And then the negation would make 17. Now, we don't need that many. And because we're being clever and lazy, like good logicians, we'll only use a set that's easy to use and that can be used to represent all of those statements. Now we could be really clever and just use one connective, but that would make for really long and complicated statements, make the logic hard to use. So we don't want to do that. We could use all 17 negation and 16 binary connectives, but that would be really hard to learn. And so what logicians and mathematicians decided on is we're going to use a subset of those negation and four binary connectives. And that will give us maximum ease of expressibility. And we can express every statement that can be expressed with all the rest of the connectives with those five. So our first connective is the tilde. And the tilde symbolizes negation or the denial of the truth of a simple statement. So it modifies a simple statement. You put it immediately to the left of it. And it says it's not the case that this simple statement is true. So for example, if someone says, I don't love you anymore, well, that's very negative, all right? L for love, tilde for don't, I don't love you anymore, tilde L. I love you, it's not the case that I love you. It's false that I care for you. Also very negative, all right? C, I care for you. Tilda, it's false that I care for you. It's not the case that I want to be with you. Again, very negative. W, I want to be with you. Tilda W, it's not the case I want to be with you. Right. So our first connective here is the tilde. We'll start looking at our binary connectives in the next module.